the morning markets kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tom from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets picking things up in similar territory as of quite the acceleration end of the day, right? During my dad's program, 3 o'clock yesterday, we're trading right where we were right now. You surge higher by about 25 points into the close. We trade price level until about 3.30 a.m. Eastern time. And we're back to 47.65 in those S&Ps. We're off by 20 points right now. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 108 points right now. That's two-thirds percent. We're actually below the lows of yesterday afternoon. Dow right now. Let me see if I can fix that. No, I've got to get that vocabulary. It's been an up year in 2023, 2024, shaping up a little bit different. Look at the volatility on the Dow yesterday, Right. You dip down almost 350 points from where we were at 38.1 to 37.750. You get back above 30,000, middle of the day, just volatility everywhere, man. And just like that, we're back to 37,849. Dow off four tenths percent. And how about the Russell, man? Looking a little bleak in the Russell. The Russell now a solid 100 points. That's a 5% pullback from where we were on December 27th, man. The volatility percentage-wise in the Russell is just bonkers sometimes. You talk about volatility. What were we talking about yesterday? What were we talking about? Remember? Do you remember what we were talking about? We were talking about Bitcoin. And we were talking about, hey, there's a lot of optimism built into this Bitcoin around the ETF right now. You saw Coinbase accelerating dramatically lower yesterday as well. Bitcoin finally gets quite an acceleration. And when you get an acceleration in Bitcoin, it's a 10% acceleration. And at these price levels, a 10% acceleration right now is $5,000 almost. From 46000 at 5 in the morning down to 41110 at 7 in the morning, we're back to 42705 42, With that in mind, we do jump to Coinbase. As, yeah, we were talking about this one yesterday. Oh, man. Coinbase just gave up $40 from where we were at 6 in the morning yesterday. $40. $40. It's my dad's favorite number. 40 uh, 185 to 145 You talk about volatility, man. Um, that is your biggest indicator on crypto up there. Okay? Let's put this on a daily. Where are we back to, man? <laughs> Look at this, though. We're only back to where you were on December 18th. Okay? I mean, where's a natural pullback on Coinbase? Look at this. Last time we had volume on Coinbase was July 13th, folks. Got you to a high of 106. We're sitting at 145 right now. On a Fibonacci basis. Yeah, the 618 gets you back to the high of July. Right, that first acceleration on a daily basis is July 13th. Gets you up to about 110. 114.93 is the 618 pullback. And on the following day, July 14th, look at that. We got to 114.43. Be careful, man. Longer term, yes. I think this kind of got rid of the riffraff. There's Bitcoin. Pretty remarkable that it took a Ponzi scheme. It took Binance doing their deal. CZ is going to do 18 months. But guess what? Everyone's clean now. Right, that is the factor that goes on. Everyone's clean, as in CZ. Binance has made their deal. FTX is out of the market, which was a scheme, and you got room to go higher. We got two double peaks in 2021. Not often do I spend so much time on crypto in the first segment, but boy, we got some. Whoops, there go. There it is. We got some big things going on. Longer term, yeah, I think this thing is ripe for an acceleration. But we just went from 16,000 to 45,000. We tripled in price in one year. Wouldn't be outlandish to see this thing dip back down to 30, 32,000, something like that. We were just trading, folks, in September at 25,000. So keep that in mind. Quite an acceleration. And I think Coinbase, as I stated yesterday, was a little bit of the heads up when this thing traded from 185 to 165. Bitcoin was still holding up pretty well, right? Yesterday, Bitcoin was still chopping around 46,000 when we were talking about Coinbase decelerating to lower prices. 
this morning, Bitcoin joining the rally. All right, crude. You know, I almost saw a $2 price. I know they must exist. I think I passed a gas pump yesterday. It was $3 and one penny. I said, damn, man. $2 gas coming at you. And uh, yeah, that seems to be the case. As we're sitting at seventy-one twenty-two, and the price of crude, you're technically up by 84 pennies. From where we were yesterday afternoon, you reached a 69 handle overnight. 69.28, the price of crude, we're trading at 71.16, even as the geopolitical tensions ratchet up around the Red Sea, right? Around the Houthis, the rebels, um, and we have a little bit of more potential geopolitical as you got a Hamas leader getting killed out there in Beirut, in Lebanon, potential to ratchet things up even further. Nonetheless, we got negative markets and we have crude trading with the 71 handle. You jump over to notes and bonds, what do we got? We got lower price and higher yield coming at you. What? Who said? What? That's right. Lower price and higher yield. We're within a stone's throw of 4%, folks. 3.99 on that 10-year. 3.99. Nice round number. Uh, you put this back on a daily? No real extreme pullback, right? We just traded from 105 and change up to a price level of 113 and change. So we've given up one point. But remember, we just went up eight points. You've given up one point. Now, for some Fibonacci context on this move, i give you a little bit of context. I mean, if you're talking about where we can go, the 382 brings you back to almost 110. That's kind of the area that you chopped around at August through September before you traded lower. Yeah, so maybe 110, 111, right? Something like that. Always interesting. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks coming up after this break. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat at 40 past the hour. Teddy writes the Tiger Forex report every week, folks. He has a couple great webinars under the services tab at TFNN. We always talk about Forex. We always talk about yields, which drives a lot of the Forex action. Forex action drives the yields accordingly. Uh, we always talk some good crude oil. So that's coming up at 40 past the hour as well. A couple great interviews on this Wednesday program. You jump over to the volatility index. Still sitting with a 13 handle, but slightly elevated. 1423 is where we got to pre-market yesterday. We're trading at 1383. A little bit of volatility in this market as we keep sliding to negative prices. We're making pre-market session lows right now. We're below yesterday's low in the – wait, back that out. We're not getting – let's put it on a 15-minute. There you go. 4763. And, yeah, we're what? Almost 80 points off of where we were trading at last Wednesday, last Thursday, coming into the final trading day of – 2023 pretty remarkable you jump over to the dollar index as we got market weakness we got higher yields you have dollar strength right kind of just a reversion of what we've been seeing interested to talk to teddy because he's been talking about this you know we talked about it last week coming into the end of 2023 he and i saying risk reward, right? Where is the possibility of moves in this market when you trade from 107 in the dollar down to 101? Yeah, there is dramatically room on a longer term basis lower, but don't be surprised if you get a little bit of a pullback or a little bit of a reprieve of some of these moves because they've just been so magnificent, man. Um, the tenure comes to mind the most, you know, from a 5% handle in October down to, what did we get to? About 3.8% the yield on the tenure. We are at a nice, round, simple number of 4% yield on the tenure. All right, folks, we got a lot to talk about. We got some Fed speak. Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin, he's a voting member. We'll talk about him. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks when we get back. We got a lot to talk about, folks. January 3rd, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Apologies. Hit the silent button there for a moment. We're back with the S&Ps down by 23. NASDAQ 100 off by 111 right now. And we jump over to Apple shares. So Apple almost started the hysteria a bit to the downside yesterday. You close out 2023 at 192. Just like that, we're almost at 182, man. We're trading at 184.22. You see the low yesterday, 183.89 talking about an eight dollar pullback on a company with about 16 billion shares outstanding folks uh what is that 24 48 128 it's about it's about 130 billion dollar market cap lost 130 billion dollar market cap loss uh pay attention man these tech stocks they carry the market up and if they got some problems man be careful microsoft quite a drop on the open but not exactly the slide that apple saw all day you had Microsoft trade from 374 to 368, and we're trading, it closed at 370, yeah, but we're trading right at the lows yesterday of 368.15 yesterday. What I did find interesting, right, I talked about at the end of the program yesterday, of course, Basil Chapman, he comes up next every morning, Tiger Technicians Hour, live from 10 to 11, writes an outstanding newsletter, folks, the opening call, if you haven't checked it out, great time to do it. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers. Basil's outstanding daily trading service. He puts out at least about a 40-minute video every weekend. you got archive webinars in there. But what he has often talked about is rotation, okay? And on the day when we had stocks getting slammed right across the board, you had some winners there, man. Check out Walmart yesterday, right? Walmart. From 157 and change to above 159 on the close yesterday, and we're higher yet again today. Target. Higher as well yesterday, from 142 to 144. This morning, you are backing off a bit, 142.56, but a little bit of a divergence going left and right there um, with tech stocks pulling back, and you saw a couple of those equities trading a bit higher. All right, to talk about some of the market action, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. And let's just jump into it. Kevin, we got a little bit of red on the board yet again this morning. Good morning. Yeah, what's going on with this 2024, Tommy? With all these red, all these red arrows on, on, on the screen, it's a little uh, different than 2023. But you know, Tommy, the start of 2024 may have something to do with how 2023 finished, and that is valuations are a little high, and some of the data, like the Apple downgrade yesterday, certainly had something to do with the overall market. So, I think today is going to be another one of those days where we're trying to figure out. 
what the, I think one of the big things we're going to find out today is the Fed minutes that come out at 2 o'clock Eastern, did Jerome Powell, did they talk about cutting rates or didn't they? Right? Jerome Powell says they did. Some of the people at the meeting comes out and says they really didn't talk about them. So we'll find out what that is. I mean, we, we, we get some jolts data. That's supposed to uptick slightly from 8.73 million to 8.75. We get ISM manufacturing at 10 o'clock Eastern. That's 13 straight months in contraction and expected to be another month in contraction, Tommy. So, yeah, this market is certainly, uh, you know, stumbling out of the blocks to start the year for sure. Yeah, like you said, I, I found myself saying up X amount of points. I say I got to recalibrate that brain. We're down points. Doesn't make sense to my brain. I'm not used to those types of analysis. Uh, but we do have some red across the board. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Bitcoin a little bit, Kevin. I'm pulling it up here on the Thinkorswim platform. Quite a pullback this morning. Coinbase in particular, man. Not sure if you saw Coinbase from 185 pre market yesterday. I got a price tag of 187.95 on my Thinkorswim chart. Just going back to last Friday early, we're at 146 this morning. A lot of euphoria, quite the year for Bitcoin yesterday. And I just want to get your take, man. People talking about it. I mean, just that number on Coinbase down 20% on Coinbase. Quite a start to 2024. Bitcoin still above 40,000. A lot of optimism about that ETF. Do you look at Bitcoin at all? You got any opinions? On what's happening in that volatile market to kick off the year? I personally don't trade Bitcoin, Tommy, but I can tell you this. The more it gets adapted, like I think the news on this ETF is pretty important, the more it gets adapted, the more people may, you know, the more demand. I think it's on a big momentum move right now that may, frankly, have just come to an end. Actually, if there's some news about the ETF or what's happening there, I didn't see the breaking news on Bitcoin or Coinbase. Am, yeah. But certainly, if it's some news on the ETF acceptance or not, that's what seems to be driving Bitcoin lately. But as you know, Tommy, Bitcoin's a momentum trade. And once it starts in one direction based <laughs> on the news, it, it's hard to really understand what the value is of Bitcoin. But it certainly trades on some momentum here based on new cycles and overall adaption, Tommy. It's a great point, man, in terms of maybe, you know, as they always say, right, buy the rumors, sell the news. We hear that news come out, and I'm not sure what's driving all that action. I mean, Coinbase started some of that pullback yesterday, Bitcoin joining the pullback today. But, yeah, maybe this is, I mean, talk about all-time, uh, not, not all-time, but, boy, we're pretty high up there on the optimism in the crypto sector. I don't know if you noticed yesterday, Kevin, what do you think about, you know, some of the equities I was talking about as I jumped to you to start the program? Um, Walmart, quite an update yesterday, a little bit of a rotation. Maybe you had the FANG stocks, the Magnificent Seven pulling back hard. Not all the equities pulling back with the market, though. Did you see some of those? What do you think about that in terms of FANG stocks let us higher last year? And we have a little bit of a difference. Walmart's the one that jumped up out of me the most, quite a surge it's higher. But I didn't know if you saw that happen at all yesterday. Yesterday was an interesting day because of what they bought and what they sold, right? They sold. It's, it's almost like the market looked at the big percentage winners from last year and said, we should probably lighten up on some of these after, <laughs> let's say, NVIDIA is up 238%, Oof. right? Yeah. You, you look at the percentage winners from last year. And remember, Walmart broke down hard on their fourth quarter, on their third quarter earnings. So it sold off. It's probably recovering some of that. Remember, Target went up yeah. and Walmart went down on third quarter earnings. So I'm sure that a little bit of recovery, as as you know, Tommy, Walmart's going to put up the numbers. If the, if the economy starts to slow, they actually probably do. They outperform most companies during any type of recession or as people price down in some of their purchases. So not really surprising that Walmart – when it's sold off after earnings is probably recovering here. Yeah, I found, you know, my, my own personal, found myself in Walmart a lot over the holiday season, man, getting the same goods you can get in other places at a more affordable price. And with where things are in terms of prices, everybody paying attention to those prices. With that in mind, Kevin, January 3rd, you guys got any equities coming up on Fast Market at 12 today? All things travel today, Tommy, on Fast Market. We'll look at Expedia. We'll look at United Airlines, and we'll look at Royal Caribbean. So any way or any form that you can use to travel, we're going to cover it today, Tommy. We're going to do boats, we're going to do planes, <laughs> and we're going to do booking companies. Nice. Expedia. I've used Expedia myself a few times, um, and quite a surge for them. Pulled it up. Just that recent earnings they had at about 93. We're pushing 148. 
Kevin, I appreciate the time as always on a busy morning, man. We look forward to Fast Market at 12 today, and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow on the program as well, as always. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. Fast Market today. You heard about it. All things travel. Uh, yeah, I use Expedia myself a lot for many things. Um, you know, if you've never used it for a rental car, folks, that's one of the things I've used it for. I found tremendous deals. You go on there and you just choose a rental car, okay? And there are some great deals that they put you out there, let alone travel. Um, you combine it with the hotels, etc. It's one of the services that I have used myself um, and had some decent experience with. And you see the resurgence. Where do we pop to? The 618 Fibonacci. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Don't go away. We'll be back in three minutes for that opening bell. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and you open right near pre-market session lows right now with the S&Ps 4762. We're off by half a percent. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 7 tenths percent, 16,599. You jump over to the Dow right now, we're off by 3 tenths percent. The Russell leading the way down, trading off 1.3 percent right now. You jump around to some of the stories out there this morning. And yeah, so this one, you had a senior Hamas leader in Lebanon. That's what I talked about briefly at the program here. The deputy political head of Hamas was killed on Tuesday alongside six 
other members of the Palestinian militant group. This was in Beirut, in Lebanon. So you got the potential here to escalate things slightly. Lebanon has claimed Israel is responsible for the blast, accused Israel of trying to drag Beirut into the regional war. Israel has not yet claimed responsibility for that, even though the odds are pretty high that they have some responsibility of what's going on. Um, again, just the possibility for things ratcheting up on a geopolitical basis, and we jump from that to this story, just coming out this morning as I'm on the air with you got 100 people killed in Iran, and this looks to be maybe internal terrorism. Not sure what's going on, just coming out there. This was as part of a ceremony to commemorate their top commander, Salamini, right, who was killed by U.S. drone attack in 2020. So they had a a big event going on to celebrate him, and you got a couple explosions going over there, and this looks to be a tough one. Haven't seen any video, but you're talking about uh, potentially 100 people dead, hundreds injured. Just, just not good on a humanity basis. And when you got geopolitical tensions ratcheting up, when you're involving Iran, you're involving Beirut, you're involving Lebanon, and yeah, um, the potential for things to escalate, to put it lightly. All right, what else we got here? Let's see. Oh, we got a couple of cool stories. All right, let's kick it off with this one. All right, markets are open, but this one is because of innovation. Okay, now check this out. Friend store, um, one of my friends shared this with me this morning. We're all familiar with the game Tetris. Okay, we got a 13 year old breaking Tetris, and we got a 16 year old that might be the darts champion in the world coming up. That 16 year old's playing for 500 grand. This 13 year old, he's just playing for YouTube views as of now, but nonetheless, pretty remarkable the first person to beat the game when it came up 34 years ago 34 years ago all right i am you gotta do the math man i'm 43 so can't believe tetris came out when i was nine first eight years of my life didn't even exist right uh what a perfect time nine years old i was really i mean born in 1980 Video games, I mean, to be nine years old when Tetris comes out, that's like the perfect age to ratchet up some Tetris. All things screen time, right? Keep your keep your eye on that screen time. But screen time can be okay for kids as well. So competitive Tetris player, first known human to beat the game, okay? In doing so, doing so Blue Scuddy broke world records for overall score, level achieved, and total number of lines in the 34-year-old game. Previously, only AI had broken Tetris. That was two years ago, too, when you click on that. Brings you to a YouTube video from two years ago that AI had broken it. Took him about 38 minutes, all right? I watched some of this YouTube video this morning. Now, what is so cool about this story, I said, how did how this happen, right? In 2021, they, and I say they, the gaming community, discovered a new technique of how to use the Nintendo controller. Folks, this controller has been out for 34 years. Okay, if anything, this taught me that you can always be innovating. Okay, and what it is, is it's called rolling. And basically the way it works is instead of trying to hyper tap the buttons, okay, because what, you got to go so fast when these lines are all coming down fast, right? They're dropping the different Tetris shapes. You have to press the button so quickly to transform that and, and change which way it's coming down, change the shape so it fits in the opening, okay? That it used to be hyper-pressing, hyper-tapping was the way that all these world championships were basically won, that people had figured out how to hyper-tap those buttons, okay? They would type them 12 times per second, and that was the way that all of the people competed. Well, guess what? Somebody discovered in 2001 that you could literally just take your fingers and roll them underneath the controller as you're holding it down, and that gets you 20 times per second. Imagine that you have something that is 30 years old and nobody has even found out the best way to hold the controller yet. And that's what they did. So remember that when you think something can't be innovated. Pretty remarkable that 30 years later, somebody figures out a better way to hold the controller, to press the buttons, to beat the game, and you got a 13-year-old that does it best. A 13-year-old that does it best. So nonetheless, uh, I'll post that link in the dead. If you want to check out the video, kudos to him. And yeah, I guess it's a kill screen. The game just kind of stopped. It looked like it froze, but I guess that's the way it happens when you reach that level. He broke the score. He broke the most amount of lines, and he broke the game. Um, kudos to him. But innovation, right? That's what I found so m remarkable about that story, that somehow until 2021, people hadn't figured out the best way to hyper-tap those buttons to compete in some of the world championships. And there's always a, a Tetris one. That's going to be around forever. All right, what else we got? Where do we got it? Yeah, here's the 16-year-old. Why not? 
500,000 pounds at stake, man. Luke Littler, 16 years old, and he's competing for the final of the World Darts Championship. Pretty cool, man. 631,000 U.S. Uh, he's already bagged. What's that? Three? Yeah, he's already bagged whew, 250 grand, something like that. So kudos to him. 13-year-olds breaking Tetris. 16-year-olds breaking the Darts Championship out there. Um, yeah, and he beat the 2008 World, 2018 World Champion to make the finals. Pretty cool, man. You know, what you can do at a young age. Listen, I see it myself, man. Tommy, he's still two years old, and I'm always saying, man, he's a little human. He's a little man. He's a little boy, folks. Amazing what you can do at a young age when you're exposed to those children. You really understand that two years old, three years old, let alone 13 and 16. Um, smarter than you probably realize, than all of us probably realize, what you're capable of at that young age. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, we talk a little bit of AI. Let's talk a little bit of auto sales. There you go. U.S. auto sales bounced back in 2023. Automakers could confront more difficulties this year with industry-wide sales expected to level off. Be interesting to see where we go from here. Now, analysts project industry-wide sales of new cars could reach nearly 15.5 million. That's about a 13% increase from the prior year. But that's not quite where we were in prior years, man. Yeah. And you're talking about 2024, 15.6 million in annual sales, but car prices remain far above where they were in 2019. And check it out, man. 46,000 is where we were for the new vehicle in December of 2022 and fell further to 46,000 last month, man. Quite the number. They talk about Tesla in here as well. Auto companies shaping up for maybe a little bit of a tougher year this year than we had last year. We talk about new jobs. Postings fell in 2023, but we're still up from pre-pandemic levels. Still up. Job postings are still up from when we came into the pandemic, and we got an unemployment rate at around 4%, right? Total job postings as of the end of last year declined more than 15% from the year earlier, but still above where we were in 2019. Um, percentages can be deceiving, folks, okay? Job postings on Indeed, year-over-year -year change. Well, I mean... Who was pushing out jobs in January of 2021, right? Nobody. Because remember, folks, what was going on there is the vaccines weren't yet available. Everything was happening online. Things were just beginning to peak. Nonetheless, uh, we'll see where we go. When we come back, though, we're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstaff. We're going to talk some Forex. We're going to talk some crude oil. We're going to talk some yields. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets in negative territory to kick things off. And what do we got? We got a little bit of lower price, higher yield happening right now. We got a little bit of dollar strength to talk about some of the market action. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He puts out new issues every week, updates throughout the week when warranted. He's got a couple webinars in there as well you can check it out on the front page of tfnn the tiger forex report right under the newsletter tab you subscribe folks it's 97 dollars. it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee bit of a pullback from the trends we've had going on but let's jump into the action teddy cakes dad here man good morning tommy happy new year Happy New Year. Uh, listen, we had a great discussion last week. Kind of some of what we talked about is coming to fruition this week. Uh, now that we've gotten, you know, a little bit of a pullback, we got the 10-year yield maybe at 4%, right? We got the dollar index popping above 102. Um, what do you think about some of this market action? Where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, I think we, you know, it's, it's perfect uh, from transition from last week to this week. Everything that we talked about has pretty much come true. So um, I think that as far as yields, I like them right now. I think you had a nice profit taking move, you know, over the past few sessions. Um, it's you got to realize that, you know, the interest rate market has been rallying since the middle of October. So the fact that we've pulled back a couple points in the 10 year and in the bonds, well, it's not a surprise, that's for sure, you know. So um, the question is, is it going to continue? And I think we might be at that buy the rumor, sell the fact kind of stage right now. So whether this is a correction um, in the long term basis, what we've been viewing, or is it time for a short term correction before this new trend continues? I think we're in that situation where we have two situations that we're more likely to sell off, meaning interest rates should go a little bit higher over the next couple of weeks or so, you know, which gives strength to the dollar. You're seeing that in the dollar index and also some of the major currencies like you've seen the U.S. dollar Canada get a really good bounce since we talked last week. Obviously, the euro U.S. dollar has sold off pretty strong, you know, and I think it's kind of interesting, too, because I heard you talking about Bitcoin and Coinbase and Bitcoin, especially if you look at the rally that it's had. It's kind of ironic. The bond market bottomed out in October. So did Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has now started to falter and top out as the interest rate market is looking at least for a short term correction. You know, so it's kind of funny how those two are kind of trading in tandem right now. Um, I'm not saying that they're going to continue to do so, but it does seem that right now as <clears throat> money was coming out in that way, as far as where, is, where can big money go? And especially in that market, you're looking at whales in the Bitcoin market, you know, and then you have the ETF stuff that we're talking about. These are all things that are going to have more interest, you know, so um, I think that's part of the run up. I think there is some sort of a correlation there. So I would watch that. So it would be interesting to see if we actually could compress this move to the upside as far as yields, meaning lower trading bond and 10 year prices. Um, now, today I would watch it because we've had a nice profit taking move. And if you look at the short terms, <clears throat> the ones in two, the, the two year and five year haven't really moved. The 10 years at a good to one to almost three relationship. And when you have that relationship between those two, the 10 year and the 30 year, 
you have to watch the 10 year because if the 10 years net doesn't continue to tick lower, it's going to be hard for the bonds to stretch any much low, much more lower today because there's usually not more of a spread than one to three. It's more between two to one to between two to one and uh, three to one for the spread between those two as far as how many ticks you'll be up or down in any given day. You know, because one of the reasons those relationships exist is because there are spreads between those markets, which futures traders would understand. I don't know how many of your viewers know about future spreads between interest rate markets, so I don't even want to get into that one. Um, but I think nice. that's what you're seeing as far as what's going on with the dollar. So pay attention to that, especially your Bitcoin traders. Um, and, and I did hear you talk about Coinbase, and I think that the sell-off that you're seeing in Coinbase, I don't know if your readers or f followers that are following crypto know that, you know, <clears throat> they had the ruling that came out last week about um, SBF, how they're no longer going to go after him criminally for all the money that was taken out of the company and given to political donations, which no company should be giving customer funds to, as a donation to anybody to begin with. You know, that's fraud in itself, you know. So the fact that they're doing that, waiving that, means that, well, well, if some other crypto company does that or any company does that now, that means that's a precedent. We're not going to go after you for that. So that's a way to definitely slush money out of a company that now is now going to be a precedent. OK, then you also have the whole thing with BlockFi that expired as of um, the, the, the first of the year for people who aren't familiar with what's going on with BlockFi. They're settling all the funds of customers, of which I am one of them. Um, I'm going to supposedly get a check for cash value of some of the crypto that is left. Um, it's going to be like basically less than pennies on the dollar. So for what I'm getting back out of a couple grand, I think I'm going to get like, I don't know, maybe – Ten dollars, twelve dollars, something oh, like that. Sorry, man. You know, so so that also yeah. proves to you that crypto companies. <laughs> There's a big problem because how sure. do you transfer money where they have a custodial agreement? But I thought your wallet is on. Uh, you can't break into that. That's all yours. So obviously that whole theory is out the window. Um, the fact yeah. that once they have it, it's almost like that South Park episode when they're at the bank. It's like, here's my money. Thank you very much. How, uh, how much do I have left? You're done. <laughs> it's I, gone. I, the it's moment gone. you said the it's South gone. Park episode, you know? I, and it's gone. It's gone. Right? And it's and gone. And it's gone. Yeah, I, exactly. Hey, listen, I know. So, and I think that's what's happening with Coinbase because anyone one that knows about those companies realizes that. And then I'm also, I have with Nexio also another company, uh, barely any of the assets that I had put in there originally are there anymore. So that's two crypto oh, houses. That's why I always tell people, spread your money out between brokerage houses because you never know if one goes down. Well, here you have yeah. two that definitely reacting nefariously. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Out of the ones that were promoted as the top compliant that's ones true. in the industry by the yeah. financial industry as well. So that scares me when it comes to this whole ETF thing and stuff that's being launched as well. So, but right. you can, I would watch the yields, um, see how that does maybe wag the tail of Bitcoin, if you will. And I think that, yeah, you're going to see a little bit of dollar strength short term. And here's something you got to think about too, is oil, how this is going to come into play over the next couple of years. We're in an election year and I wouldn't doubt it if Biden doesn't reverse what he did on his first day of office to the oil industry. But how do you combat what's going on with the BRICS and stuff like that? Saudi Arabia just joined BRICS. So that means they're going to be doing most of their petrol transactions in other currencies. So how do you fight that? Well, you can't fight that. If we're not going to be raising interest rates, what's the other thing we could do? The only thing we can do is pump a ton of oil, a ton of oil. I mean, pump, turn those pumps on so strong to keep the market below where it's at, where it's at or lower, because what would that do? It lessens the demand for other currencies. So that helps to keep the BRICS currencies down in value. So I think you might see a commodity-driven currency war developing over the next six months. We'll see. I don't know. It could actually be like just it. type of theory that comes out of nowhere in my head sometimes. But no. the way things are looking right now, you know, if it acts like a dog and it walks like a dog, it probably is a dog. You know, it's right? Like, dude, crude's at seventy-one dollars, right? We got wars breaking out in the Middle East everywhere, and so something's yeah. going on there, man. So I appreciate. Yeah. You how does the oil wisdom. go down? How does oil go down right now with wars in the Middle East all over the Seriously, place? Seriously, right? I was talking to Kevin yesterday. I said the same thing. We were talking about crude and i said you know can you imagine right you're, you're bullish on crude and you see the headlines coming out you know whether iran sending warships out to the red sea and then you watch the price mm -hmm. of crude drop literally as that's happening so as you said it's happening it walks like a dog man pay attention right right teddy i appreciate the time as always man that was a quick nine minutes i mm -hmm. uh, appreciate you joining the program folks check out the tiger forex report he's got a couple great webinars under the services tab as well Teddy, I appreciate it as always. We'll talk to you next week, man. Thanks, Tommy. Take care, guys. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned.
The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now off 26 points. Right now, session low is trading at 47.61. NASDAQ 100 down about six tenths percent. And as they're talking about in the den, folks, if you're listening to the program, you're out there on YouTube, okay, come on over to TFNN. Check out the Tigers Den. It's a dollar for the year. That's just the way that we verify everyone's identity to make sure we don't get spammers, hackers, et cetera. So a dollar for the year just to verify everyone's identity, okay? Some great discussions in the den going on over there this morning. Uh, how about some of the stocks that got pummeled yesterday? Look at the charge. Microsoft, 368 to 372. Looks like things might have been a little overdone yesterday. Apple, still in negative territory, but they trade from 183.50 to 185. Google shares catch a bid we're basically flat after opening in the negative this morning. Amazon up by a third of a percent. You trade from 149 to 150. You jump over to NVIDIA, right? They trade from 1472 in the pre-market. They're still off by half a percent, but they just traded 5 to $7 higher. So it's an interesting day. As our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young, right? Uh, one of the articles I was reading this morning from the journal talking about tech's AI hangover might just be getting started. One of the things it made me think about, I was reading an article months back, okay, months back, and it was talking about multiples, valuation growth, euphoria, some of the things that potentially could be happening with some of the equities that's going on right now, right? And they talked about Cisco, okay? Now, you jump over to Cisco, 
You jump to the Analyze tab. You put in Cisco there. You're talking about a company that is valued at $203 billion. All right, quite a company, okay? Here's the kicker, folks. You go back 20 years, nah, it's been quite a growth story. You go back as far as you can go, though, and we've never gotten back to the euphoria that you had from the dot-com bubble when Cisco was going to take over everything. Now, what's remarkable here is Cisco has had remarkable revenue growth over that period of time, okay? You want to see something staggering here? Here's how it looks, folks, okay? The revenue chart for Cisco, in 2000, they were doing about 12 to 18 billion. They keep growing. A little bit stagnant since 2015, but the point being, be careful of some of these equities because you got a lot of growth priced in at these multiples. Folks, stay tuned. Basil Chapman's coming up next. Have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks.